Hello, good afternoon, everyone, uh, and welcome again to uh, our another uh, launch, uh, which is uh, from our conferencing and discussion or the Chairman Delegate uh, Product Portfolio. Uh, it is uh, it is a launch plus uh, 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 some more details about the background of this uh, portfolio that we have. Uh, so, you know, uh, as always for this session, uh, I'm being assisted by my colleague Fali, who's, you know, helping me drive the presentation. Uh, as you know, I have this, uh, you know, set up here and I, I'm actually talking to you, uh, through one of the, uh, the products that I'm, uh, that I'm launching today. So more about that in, in some time. Uh, but to begin with, uh, you know, some background, as I said, as to, you know, what is the Microflex Complete? Uh, it's basically the name of our conferencing and discussion portfolio or the chairman delegate system that sure has uh, you know in its uh, in its kitty so uh, let's see you know let's look at what is the uh, what is today's agenda and what are we going to cover uh, so obviously we'll we'll uh, cover a brief about conferencing and discussion uh, for those in the call who do not know about uh, this particular concept or are very new uh, in terms of you know what sure does in this uh, area uh, what are its applications uh, in different industry verticals? And yes, the uh, the introduction of the new MXC 605 uh, delegate unit, the different flavors of that. Uh, and uh, I'll also talk a bit about uh, the new customization program that we have launched to have uh, you know custom fit units, uh, you know uh, the chairman delegate units for custom spaces. And then we'll talk about some tools uh, that we have to enable. Uh, your knowledge and expertise uh, in, in these particular solutions. And then finally, how you can reach us uh, and if you have any other queries. So to begin with, uh, let's start with the, the first uh, you know, topic of today, which is uh, the basics of uh, discussion and conferencing systems. So basically, we, are, we all know, you know what this discussion system is, uh, you know, is about. It is basically uh, a PA system, which is also it is commonly called as, uh, allows multiple people sitting in a meeting room to have a microphone in front of them and have their voice amplified or reproduced uh, in an amplified way in that room. So a large audience get to hear uh, each other very clearly. And what you're seeing on the screen is uh, a very typical uh, traditional approach of having a PA system deployed. A gooseneck microphone you know, goes on every seat and then from every seat there is a cable going to a mixer. The mixer goes into a, a processor or an amplifier and then from there it goes to the speakers, uh, which are the house speakers. So that's how you basically have a typical PA system in place. Now this is one way of having uh, 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 you know, sound reinforcement happen. A lot of cables going in from each table. So you have a lot of uh, you know, uh, work to do when it comes to the, the electronics part. Another way is a more sophisticated way is to have uh, uh, the, the, the digital discussion system. So in this, uh, in terms of hardware, you still have the gooseneck in front of you. You still have the, this, uh, you do have the speakers also in front of you, but you don't need to have uh, individual cables going from every seat back to the rack, right? Here, what happens is that each individual unit has, uh, you know, its own DSP, its own speaker, its own microphone, and then they're all daisy chained, uh, you know, amongst each other. And then from the last unit goes back to the central unit, which is the CCU. And this is the concept of the uh, uh, the typical discussion, digital discussion system. And then from the CCU, if you want it to be taken out for a house speaker, if you want to integrate with a VC. Uh, those all can be done. So it's a more sophisticated and a digital arrangement of uh, having a simple discussion. Another level of uh, this unit wherein you have more features with, with structured meeting management uh, is the conferencing system. So that is basically the difference when it comes to this uh, this industry. Uh, uh, globally, these are the two, two key terms which define the two types of uh, meetings. So one is a discussion wherein you just have you know, you press a button, you speak, your voice gets amplified, gets distributed across the room, and and that's it. You don't have you know any additional features to add to. But when it comes to conferencing, along with just speech reproduction, you also have additional soft features. For example, if you need to add voting, uh, you need to add uh, a structured meeting agenda, and you can have that meeting agenda shown on the display. Uh, and you also have uh, speech time, so you know you can allocate. 
uh, speech time to the delegates, uh, to the meeting participants. Generally, you see that in parliaments or state assemblies or Vidhan Sabhas that you have these uh, you know, additional managed features because the meeting there happens in a very structured way. There is a speaker of the house. The speaker of the house defines who gets to speak, how long they get to speak, whether they can speak immediately, whether they need to put a request, and then the speaker gets to assign that person requesting to speak. So these are additional functions which a conferencing system provides above a simple discussion system. So it's a combination of both hardware and software which make a proper conferencing uh, you know, a system like this happen, right? So this was about you know, what is uh, the difference between discussion and conferencing systems and how, uh, how, how do they work conceptually? Now, moving ahead, uh, where are these systems uh, used? What are the applications, right? It can be uh, in different spaces, different uh, multi-seater spaces. Most common we know is the government or the public sector space wherein uh, you do need to have sound reinforcement in place, but you also need to record the uh, the activities of the meeting. You know, for example, uh, you do have voting, uh, you have agenda-based uh, meeting structure, you, you probably need participant identification as well uh, because uh, you know when, when people walk into the room, uh, they need to be identified as uh, you know, which, which seat do they represent, which constituency do they represent, uh, for example. So that way is in a common room, you can have different kind of meetings happen in the same place. So very typical example of government uh, you do see this in even in corporate spaces uh, like boardrooms, right? So in the next slide, you will see that uh, a similar system can be used in a, in a boardroom environment, wherein uh, it can be a wired or a wireless system, but it does uh, help you get same sound reinforcement, have a more structured meeting in place without having to worry a lot about the uh, the AV or a more complicated no rack-based AV setup. So this is one example of how a conferencing or a discussion system can be used in, in corporate environment. Not only that, you also have large spaces being used in the, in the education sector. So for example, the, the management institutes or uh, you know, higher technology institutes, uh, you do see these large classrooms wherein, uh, again, having speech reinforcement is very important and uh, speech reinforcement Enforcement, you know, is basically again a discussion system which can also be used uh, in these education uh, environments as well. So these are basically the key, uh, you know, typical applications what we see with the discussion systems. Apart from these, uh, sometimes uh, there is a use for these uh, discussion or conferencing solutions in large but temporary spaces. Uh, it could be an auditorium. It could be a large. Uh, you know, large space which which has been made into an auditorium or a large theater. For example, United Nations uh, has this kind of conferences you know, happening at different places around the globe, and uh, they basically have the delegates fly in or delegates travel to that place, and then you know they have an agenda-based discussion happening there. So in that in such meetings, you you do not have a typical uh, you know, government building or an existing building in use or an existing uh, AV in use, you have a new space where uh, you know, this system has to be brought in. So even from uh, you know, the, these systems, uh, these places or these spaces are enabled by some rental agencies who have these uh, systems in stock and they basically custom deploy based on uh, the requirements provided by the end customer there. Yeah. So these are some of the key applications of uh, uh, you know, what, uh, you know, what these solutions fit in and where. So just to reiterate, you know, what are the features? Uh, you do have sound reinforcement. It makes it much easier to deploy and manage because if you remember, not 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 every seat has a cable going back to the rack. It is daisy chain, so it's just one cable going back to the rack. Uh, structured meeting controls from the central control unit or the software. You have voting features enabled. You can identify participants when they speak. So you can identify okay, if it is me, if it is Devraj speaking. So I press a button, the software knows that, okay, this is Devraj speaking, he has this time, and you can define what to do with that kind of information. If there are multilingual meetings uh, for multinational conferences, uh, there is an interpretation uh, requirement. Uh, most of you would have observed that in, uh, let's say in, in UN level meetings or wherever there is a multilingual uh, meeting happening, you would see people wearing headphones uh, or earpieces. Uh, that is basically because they are listening to an interpreted language 
because the, the language spoken on the floor at that time may not be their primary language or the language that they understand. They are basically listening to a language interpreter, interpreted by a person sitting in a booth using a specific interpreter system. So there are these typical units which allow you to you know, interpret from different, they're listening to the floor language, which would be probably Hindi or English. And then if it has to be translated to, let's say, foreign delegate who only understands Russian or, or uh, you know, German. Uh, so it is the interpreter who basically does that uh, you know, uh, manual the, um, interpretation and then he speaks into his unit and then it goes as goes out as an interpreted channel. And from these units, you can select what language do you want to see, which channel, what language you want to hear. And then that's how the language interpretation works with these conference systems. And uh, along with that, you also get to interface this with, uh, you know, uh, AV systems, for example, a video conferencing uh, is, is supposed to happen or if you need to give it to broadcast uh, for, for media <clears throat> or even for these days, you know, if you have social media live streams happening. So that kind of integration can also be done using these uh, discussion systems. <clears throat> Excuse me. So uh, these are some of the key features uh, and then talking about the, the typical form factor of the two main uh, discussion or conferencing systems that we have in our portfolio. Uh, we have a wired system, uh, which like I mentioned, they are daisy chain and there are different kinds of units and that family is called as a microflex complete. And we also have a wireless portfolio, uh, which basically achieves a lot of uh, features from the conferencing, the wide conferencing system, but in a very wireless, uh, actually completely wireless way. So that is the Microflex Complete Wireless, MXCW. These are the two key, uh, uh, two key form factors, two key models that we have uh, for conferencing. And both of these units, in the next slide, you will see that you know, they are highly interoperable in, in many environments when it comes to meeting, especially in today's world, a lot of uh, meetings are happening virtually. A lot of uh, hard or soft codecs are in, coming into place to, uh, to make meetings happen. So it's a mix of two things. One is that you do need some office bearers, some people holding constitutional posts. They do need to visit their offices to uh, preside over these meetings or to hold these meetings. So they go to their offices, they go to their meeting rooms where you have these systems, you can have these systems in place. Uh, and then they can be interfaced with uh, you know, a video conferencing system so that they can talk to their peers uh, within the industry or outside the industry or within their organization, outside their organization through these different tools. So there's a huge interoperability also, uh, and it is not just you know, within the team or within the room kind of meeting that is enabled. So this was about uh, you know, the key, uh, you know, key features of all these uh, you know, wired and wireless uh, systems. And when it comes to the actual form factors or the product family of our wired system, which is a Microplex Complete, uh, this is basically an example, or this is basically what we have or we had uh, till now, uh, you know, when it comes to portable units, a basic portable unit or a portable unit. Portable means tabletop so that you are able to move it when required and it is not flushed or screwed into the table or the surface. So that is why it is called portable. And uh, you know, the, the middle row that you're seeing are the different variants of the, uh, the portable units, uh, the ones which support NFC card, there are some which support uh, voting, uh, and the, the top end is basically allowing you a lot of things to happen uh, to do on the touch screen, plus you know, the, the hardware options are also there. Uh, you do have the same options in the, uh, uh, in the flush mounts. If you have a permanent install, if you, want, if you do not want the delegate units to protrude out of the table, you do have the flush mount options for a majority of these uh, units as well. Along with that, you do have some uh, additional accessories to help better identify the participants. So that's where you see the, the name sign there, which is called an MXC sign. Uh, that is also an electronic uh, sign, which can, which looks just like a paper, but it's actually electronic and it becomes part of the chain to, uh, you know, visually identify the delegates uh, where they are seated, right? And then you have different uh, gooseneck options based on your locations, whether you want a single flex, dual flex, or a very short shotgun microphone, a six inch microphone as well, uh, to make it very, uh, uh, it, it did not, not make it look very you know, protruding on, on camera. If, if required. And all of these go back to the CCU, which is basically the heart of the system. And that's what, you know, it runs the whole chain of uh, conferencing. Now, in this portfolio, uh, you know, we we had the basic unit before, uh, but the basic unit had still some bells and whistles additional. For example, it had 
uh, no, no dual delegate capability, no dual uh, dual channels. Uh, you could go for uh, you know, a more advanced setup. So it was it was entry level for some markets, but for some markets like ours, for, for you know we, we are uh, you know in 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 markets like India, uh, we still you know found the need for a, a more entry level product, and that's what we actually are uh, bringing up uh, now, which is the uh, the MXC six zero five. So till now we had the six one five and six two. Uh, zero as the entry level products but uh, you know based on the understanding from different markets uh, you know the emerging type we understood that there is that space where we can fill and that's where we are bringing in the mxc 605 uh, which is uh, brought as a very entry level uh, digital delegate unit uh, it is actually basically a, a replacement of our earlier uh, you know, DDS family product, which is the DDS 5900 system, which is now obsolete, which is now not available. Uh, so it comes from the same legacy. It follows the same familiar design. Uh, it actually, uh, along with following the same design, uh, it is also able to inherit the, the features of the new MXC portfolio. So uh, some of the features you will see that it is uh, you know, coming from the earlier DDS, uh, but some of the features are actually new as well in terms of look and feel as well as performance as well. So let's look at which are those, uh, those features that are new in terms of soft features and that are you know, still old when it comes to ergonomics or, or the fit and finish of the product. So coming to the uh, product overview, just to give you a quick background, uh, you know, we announced the end of sale of the, uh, the DDS 5900 system. So the DDS systems would not be available anymore. Uh, everything that you will see uh, from sure in the name of conferencing and discussion would be Microflex company, that is MXC. And uh, with MXC 605, you have both uh, the portable units. I'm actually using a portable unit right now to speak to you all. Uh, but at the same time, I believe you can also see uh, that I have the flush mount unit. So these are the new uh, versions of both uh, portable and flush mounts of the MXC 605. So we have both the options available. Uh, and we are also able to uh, basically transition uh, you know, or, or allow the transition from the DDS to the MXC in a, in a smoother way and not it is not very abrupt. I'll, I'll explain those points. Uh, in the coming slides, but this is basically the quick background about you now how does the MXC 605 come about in the existing family of MXC uh, discussion system. Okay, so uh, Fali, if you could move to the next slide, uh, I would be able to talk more about uh, you know where does it fit. Like I said, it is it is an entry level product comes in both uh, portable and flush mount support. Uh, it still carries the three pin gooseneck from the DDS 5900 series. So it's the same uh, GM series microphone. If you know about the, the DDS series, you know, they were the GM series goosenecks. The same goosenecks can be used in the, uh, you know, in the, in the newer units as well. Uh, but uh, when it comes to the, the loop that it used to follow, the DDS 5900 uh, did not or could not support a redundant chain loop. Uh, that is something that the new MXC605 can support. So you you can actually end the loop or you know, make another loop from the last unit in the chain, put it back to the CCU, and you can have a redundant loop available just in case if one of the units in between fail, you don't have a, a rest of the chain failure. You actually have a backup line available. So it's only one unit which is affected that is out of the chain, but every, every other seat is still enabled with their units. So that's an added... A uh, hardware feature that comes with the MXC 605, which wasn't there on the 5900. Uh, we have changed the uh, the iconography or the way the the panels look. I've tried to make that uh, visible here. Uh, hopefully, if you can see that, uh, is that this is the newer unit which has a more uh, legible, more understandable icons, whereas the older ones are a bit, you know, too small or a bit. You know, fade up. And that was the design. Then we, we we understood from some users that it need it can be made better. So we we made that better here. Uh, so that's where we have new new uh, overlays. Uh, you can have the roles uh, set up in the in the GUI. And uh, one more additional feature is that you have additional two channels of interpretation compared to the DDS 5900 series. So 5900 used to support two channels of interpretation, and the 605 can have up to four channels of interpretation supported. And the upgrade uh, from legacy 5900 to the MXC 605 is also very easy. Uh, the older 5900 units can be upgraded to the newer 
uh, firmware and be part of the same chain as the new units. So, so and, and, and I'll, I'll explain a bit more on that, but it is possible. There are some conditions, but uh, you, you do still have that possibility of having a soft transition from the older units to the new ones. Okay, so uh, those are some of the key uh, overviews of the product. And uh, let's look at you know, what was the MXE line logic or the conferencing system line logic before uh and and what it is now so you know, earlier we had up to 615 uh but now we have you know the lower tier product is the 605 uh, which is the very entry level so as you can see that you know you have the complete range of products uh, when it comes to portable or flush mount delegate units uh, when it comes to discussion systems uh so all the way going from 605 to the mxa 640 you have that complete range non voting with voting with nfc card with uh, uh, no touch control. So all those options go from all the way from low tier to high tier. And then uh, when it comes to the, the flush mount units, uh, you will see those you know, models as well in the next slide, wherein uh, you know you actually able to are also able to map uh, you know what was in the, the DC fan or the DDS family and what is coming in the MXE family. So in the DC series, you had the 5980P, uh, the the rest of the flush mount stuff, uh, which is the DC series. Uh, and the loudspeaker as well. Now, in the uh, the MXC, you have the same uh, same set of products, same form factor actually. Uh, so, if you click once again, you'll see that uh, below. Uh, that is the MXC 605, exactly matching the form factor of the 590P, the flush mount short, which is the 500F equivalent, the, the uh, flush mount long, which is the uh, uh, the equivalent of the flush plate you, know, you had with the DC series. And same goes with the loudspeaker as well. Uh, so the good thing is that if you are an existing DC uh, or, or, or flush, you know, DDS flush mount unit user, uh, and if you want to upgrade to the 605, uh, you basically don't need to make any changes uh, to your existing setup. Uh, the older unit can go out and the new unit fits exactly to the same 53 mm uh, hole that was cut out for uh, the DC series. So, uh, so hardware wise also, like I said, it is not a huge forklift upgrade or barely any forklift upgrade when you, when you want to change to a newer system. Yeah. So let's see uh, you know, what is uh, what are the features that are staying from the uh, from the erstwhile DDS uh, product. So like I said, you still have the three pin gooseneck, uh, which uh, basically comes in two different variants. I do have a microphone a matrix, which will allow you to understand you know, what which kind of microphone has what kind of features. Uh, so along with gooseneck, uh, let's see what else uh, we have, which is uh, staying. Uh, the form factor is the same. Uh, like I said, I mean, both the older and new form factors are here. So this is the old one, uh, and this is new ones. The old one, you'll see uh, uh, the very older ones. You'll probably see the the DIS logo. The new ones, you'll see a uh, uh, Shure logo in it. Uh, and the fit and finish is also uh, better. Uh, I would say this one has a, a more, more of a glossy finish. Whereas the new one has a more of a matte finish. So when you when you when you hold the product and you look at it, it feels very very premium. Um, that's where the the new logo and paint job I was talking about. So that's where it has uh, it has improved. And talking about the gooseneck types, uh, so the ones that are supported on the new entry level product are the GM series, the 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 ones that you see on the second and third column. Uh, and there are two variants in that, the 5900 series and the 400 series. The 5900 series uh, happen to be the one with uh, the older capsules. The 400 ones are the newer capsules, which also support uh, uh, RF immunity or GSM immunity. So the phone interference wouldn't be there with the 400 series. That's something we would recommend you to go for also. But because you know it has the same microphone mount, uh, it basically supports both the 5900 and the uh, new ones. And if you also want, uh, if you want to go for a shorter microphone, uh, we do have a new uh, shotgun capsule, which makes, uh, you know, if you want to avoid long goosenecks, but you don't want to compromise on the audio quality. So that's where you can have the, the mini shotgun option uh, to enable speech from a distance. Like say, you know, if you don't want uh, the gooseneck to come on camera or you don't want the, the gooseneck to be very close to you, you can still go for the gooseneck uh, with the mini shotgun option. And it's just a six inch microphone sticking out of the delegate unit. So that's one neater option that you can go for with the, uh, with the GM series. 
So those were uh, some of the uh, you know the options of the microphones. Remember that uh, it is a GM series microphone that go with the MXE. Rest of the MXE products, it will be the MXE Boost Next. Yeah. And in terms of new features, uh, like I said, you do have the redundant loop uh, functionality, which gives you additional diagnostic capabilities. Uh, you do have options of having additional overlays. Uh, you have four channel interpretation and the internals of this uh, system have been overall. Uh, I mean, the, the, the motherboard is new, the software is new, uh, and that is why you are able to get the, the new loop, uh, you know, the, the, the redundant loop feature as well. Yeah, so this is some of the, the new features uh, that is coming on the MXC605 delegate units. Now, uh, uh, some of the overlay options that you see is, uh, you know, uh, you have different options in this, uh, the standard speak and function, which comes included uh, with the uh, 605. And that's what I have here, you know, pasted on, uh, on the unit. But if you want uh, different kinds, so there are additional accessory packs which you can add uh, and then have it you know, sent accordingly. Uh, same goes for uh, the, the small, shorter or the flush units as well. If you want the speak and function, if it is, if it is just a very basic requirement, you can go with the speak only accessory uh, you know, overlay. Yeah. So this is about the uh, the different overlays that you have. Uh, moving ahead, let's see uh, what is the the differentiation between the the products the existing mxc products and the new mxc 605 uh, you will have the option of voting on the 605 uh, you know although not today but you no know, uh, very soon you will be able to use that feature uh, in the mxc 630 there is uh, already voting and the 640 as well so those are our higher end units uh, but uh, the difference is the 605 has only two or three button voting right uh, and additionally, I mean, you can see that you know it is it is it has features, but not as many as the the higher end ones on the MXT. Uh, and the LED indication is also a single LED, which uh, which which allows you to have uh, an LED on, an LED off. You don't have red and green to show a, a, a speak or a request option. So these are some key differentiators between the uh, the MXC uh, 630, 640 and the 605. So very high end units and a very basic unit. And you can see in the matrix that you now, why is it very basic with very less features? Okay. Uh, moving ahead on the next slide uh, is, I think a lot of people would be interested to know about where does it stand uh, when it comes to prices. So this is an indicative pricing of uh, all the form factors that we have uh, from uh, MXC605 uh, uh, the form factors. Uh, so the portable one uh, and the, the flush mount one, the flush long, the flush short, and the, uh, the loudspeaker one as well. Uh, people who know the DDS family and the pricing, uh, you would know that it is not very different. These are still list prices, but when it comes to the actual deal, uh, it barely you know, um, uh, has any difference compared to the DDS product. So again, still very attractive. Uh, and very uh, presentable as an entry level product uh, when it comes to you know, this kind of a solution. Okay, so this was uh, uh, about all the hardware features. Now uh, about firmware, uh, because all these units go back to the CCU, which is you know which is what I'm also using here. That the CCU is what is powering up these units. Uh, but uh, I also have the uh, the older unit and the newer unit running on the same CCU, right? So what does, uh, how does that compatibility go, right? So I'm using a DIS CCU and DIS CCU was coming in, in two different modes. You had the 5900 mode to support the, the 5900 series products, or you had the, uh, the MXE uh, mode, uh, which had, uh, you know, uh, which basically supports only the MXE series of products. So in the, in the 5900 mode, it's only the DDS, and finally, if you click once, you will see that uh, you know, uh, the, the support changed from uh, 5900 to MXC. You know. So this was how this is how it was working before. Uh, now, uh, with firmware 9.0, uh, you can have both these units uh, work together. So the, uh, the, the DICCU can be upgraded to firmware 9. Uh, which will eventually upgrade the DDS 1500 series units as well and the MXE units also. So they all become part of one single chain. They speak with the same language, same software, and uh, they basically, the older units and the newer units 
if you have a DICCU, they can come together in a single chain. So anybody who wants to upgrade the number of seats uh, or to use number of seats, rentals, if they want to expand their uh, you know, capacity using the DICCU uh, with both 5900, older 5900 and the new MX605, you can do that just with the free firmware update that is coming on the, uh, on the CCU. Yeah. So this is about the firmware and compatibility. A uh, very key uh, point to note is that this is this update is only possible with the DIS CCU, uh, not the CU 5900 uh, series CCU that were before. So those CCUs would not support firmware 9. It's only the DIS CCUs uh, which will support the firmware 9 uh, capability. Okay. All right. So, so to summarize uh, uh, on the MXA605, uh, it's basically an entry-level system which can go into many government buildings, uh, you know, secretary buildings or Vidhan Sabha buildings where there are smaller meeting rooms uh, which just need uh, a basic setup to have sound reproduction in place. Uh, or it can be used in training rooms or corporates uh, or meeting rooms as well, wherein uh, you know sometimes I've seen flush units being preferred for uh, training rooms like that. So that's where you have the new... Uh, flush mounted units as well which can if you want be interfaced with uh, house speakers or external ceiling speakers as well right so at the at, yeah, being entry level uh, doesn't mean that it is not having the the typical robust feature that we had it is still built uh, you know to be a good quality robust. i mean when i mounted it i could feel you know all this uh, all all the points that i'm mentioning because when i when i did this exercise of putting up the setup uh, i was a bit harsh on these units uh, because you no know, doing it first time uh, but I, I could feel that you know it can it can bear some uh, you know some of the uh, hard ways of installation or or robust environments as well. Plus, it is uh, you know has been made scalable. Uh, like I said, you don't need to throw out your old DDS units out of the window. There is a way to have a soft update or a soft uh, expansion of your existing uh, stock or existing uh, you know meeting space. Uh, with, uh, with just a free firmware update, yeah. So this was uh, about uh, you know, all about the MXC605. Uh, for people who have questions about uh, accessories, uh, which, which sit in the back end, which are basically uh, to, for distribution of chains or to for interpretation of a wireless interpretation transmission, all those accessories remain the same. They do not change. Actually, they do not change all the way from the DIS family. Uh, so, you know, this is basically something uh, that I wanted to you know, uh, bring up. Uh, by the way, I, what I forgot to mention is that if you have any questions, uh, please uh, you know, do not hesitate to ask those in the Q&A &A, Q &A window uh, based on whatever I've presented so far, or if you have any questions from the, uh, from the earlier knowledge of uh, DI systems. Uh, so please feel free to use the Q&A window and you know, put those queries and Pali would help me moderate those questions at the end of this uh, session. And there'll be some polls coming in uh, so we would be very happy to see your responses to those polls which would help us understand as soon how does this market respond to uh, to this kind of uh, solution and for this new product all right so uh, moving ahead uh, so that was the accessories uh, which remain the same you also have software uh, again which exists in our portfolio which is software 6000 uh, which you'll see in the next slide uh, which is used for uh, managing uh, larger meetings. So the software 6000 is again uh, remains the same. There is no change, uh, uh, you know, with with respect to this product or with respect to the the firmware update on the CCU. Nothing changes on the software which sits separately on a separate PC. It is still going to work with all these uh, units and deliver all the features that it is designed to deliver. <clears throat> all right. So uh, coming up next is. Uh, one area where we we see a lot of queries when uh, there are some spaces where you where you can put uh, standard units like this, whether it is a tabletop, whether it's a flush, we make the space and then we just place that uh, delegate unit there and then we are good to go. But uh, there are some times due to aesthetic reasons or due to physical restrictions, uh, you cannot actually have uh, the same uh, factory made delegate unit go into that space. It doesn't fit well, it doesn't look nice. Uh, so there is an ask that can we have a custom unit? So hearing all that, we actually launched a customization program recently. Uh, 
uh, which is basically based on these products. And that's what we call as the MXC or the Microflex Complete Customization Program, wherein we basically take inputs from you that in, in your space, what kind of desk do you have? What kind of finish that you have? And you know what kind of finish that you want from a delegate unit? And what features do you want from that? Do you want it to be flush mount? Do you want it to have NFC card? Do you want it to have voting? Uh, do you want it to have loudspeakers built in? Uh, no, what all features do you have? And based on those inputs that we receive, we create a unit for you. And it, it, it even includes custom paints. So for example, if you want a gold uh, you know, plated finish or a gold painted uh, finish, brushed steel finish or a matte finish, uh, you know, those kind of customizations can be uh, brought in and, and on based on the size that you're providing. Uh, so it can be a table surface or it can be sometimes a non table surface. For example, we sometimes get requests for, uh, you know, uh, 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 units which uh, uh, which don't need to be exactly flushed on the units. Uh, need to be on a certain angle with a touch screen, for example, you know, if you, if you don't prefer uh, buttons because tomorrow you may want to change the menus that you are giving to the, uh, uh, to, to your, to your delegates. That's where, you know, you can have custom, uh, menus provided or to make it more, look more savvy. Uh, so that is one option. Or when you have non-table surfaces, you have those armrest units, uh, which can just be mounted on the, the arms in, let's say in an auditorium. And then you still have a delegate feature, a delegate unit feature coming up from those uh, units. So these systems are not part of a standard portfolio, but the engine, uh, we know the engine, we build the engine, we just need to put it together in a box which fits uh, you know, nicely in that space and then looks neat as well. So this is basically the customization program, uh, which allows us to give a product custom built for you know, your space or your customer's space. Uh, and make meetings happen using these features. So uh, I'll I'll give you a short uh, you know, video uh, which basically talks about what is this customization program and how we have been able to enable uh, spaces using custom units. So Fali, if you could please play that play that video. Facilities such as those used by government bodies regulatory agencies or non-governmental organizations often have a requirement for custom conferencing units. This might be because of physical dimensions. The unit has to be designed to fit into an armrest, or perhaps it's being retrofitted into existing furniture, replacing older hardware. There may be a requirement for a specific color, or that the functionality of the panel is modified in line with the customer's workflow. For example, the unit might have voting buttons, but no ID cards, which we don't offer in the standard portfolio. A good example of this is the recent project where we supplied 200 units designed to retrofit into the existing furniture, and the color was specified as gold to fit in with the decor of the room. In this way, we're able to offer state-of-the-art solutions to a very wide range of customers meeting their exacting requirements. Thank you, Fali. So that was a quick uh, view of you know, how this customization program helps. And uh, moving on, uh, you know, how do you know more about these products? How do you know more about the features of these products? There are multiple ways uh, that you can get educated and trained about. Uh, depending on what role you are, whether you are an integrator, whether you are a rental uh, equipment provider, or whether you are an end customer, also. So, what are those options? Uh, let look. Let's look at those. So, one of the options uh, that we have is a very simple one. You do have a dedicated uh, web page uh, for our conferencing products. The wide conferencing products is show.com/mxc. So, you directly head to uh, the wide conferencing section with this link, uh, or uh, you have our uh, a portal wherein you know you can uh, which is which is custom designed to have only technical details about our products uh, brochures uh, architect specifications cad drawings uh, you know all that uh, stuff that technical uh, people would be looking at to know more about the product uh, so that is uh, where we have launched the tech portal uh, which gives you all this product documentation and uh, resources to understand this complete uh, portfolio better uh, it's not just for conferencing and discussion, but it's also for a complete range of 
uh, you know, uh, uh, products uh, for audio, whether it is wireless, whether it is uh, uh, wired network products, uh, DSPs, speakers, uh, all those products are mentioned here, uh, you know, for your for your producer. Okay, so that is uh, one way. Uh, third is, uh, you know, you, we have uh, our own training training portal, training uh, uh, which is called as Sure Audio Institute, uh, which hosts a lot of uh, training uh, courses. Uh, one of the, uh, them is also the re regarding the conferencing and discussion, the Microflex complete. There's a sales enablement course, there's a technical en enablement course. Uh, we also do some webinars, which we have done in the past. Uh, we, we keep doing these sessions to, to educate uh, the audience more on these different portfolios. Uh, and you know, we also you know, have these posted <clears throat> on social media, on YouTube as well. Uh, so, you know, uh, speaking about YouTube, uh, you know, we do have a YouTube channel as well. But before I get there, uh, if you want to register uh, to our training portal, to our Sure Audio Institute, this is the link that you can uh, click on. Uh, so basically, you can capture the QR code if you're using a phone right now, or just note down this uh, uh, this this uh, this link, this this web URL, uh, which is basically sure sa hyphen sure dot and uh, just do a small sign up, and then you're good to go and explore the course catalog and see which courses uh, you know, would you be uh, wishing to you know go and and get certified, right? Uh, and apart from that, uh, like I said, we do have a YouTube channel as well. Uh, so there is a YouTube channel which uh, for South Asia, wherein we are basically we are creating regional content. Uh, you'll mostly see me and Fali there, you know, Fali talking about uh, all of his pro audio or wireless uh, microphones or about microphones in general. And you'll see me speaking about some of the systems or conferencing related products. Uh, so if you have not already been there, you know, please do visit and then you know, uh, take a look at those, uh, the information that we're providing in this, uh, in this channel. Okay. So, uh, and if you are still not satisfied with any of that information, uh, please feel free to reach out to us uh, uh, at india at sure.com or you can reach out to my uh, email as well. It's panikar underscore devraj at sure.com. Uh, so if you have any queries, feel free to reach out to us. If you're already connected with our uh, channel partners, Sun Infonet uh, in different regions, uh, you know, you still have that channel available for support and queries uh, if required. So with that, uh, I think we have uh, come to the end of this presentation uh, and uh, launch. Uh, so I hope you, you like this. And uh, before uh, we come to questions, uh, I'd like to play a small, uh, I like have fully play a small video about where are our solutions being used in uh, different uh, government or public sector spaces. Fully, if you could play that second video also. Please. <laughs> Thank everyone for uh, their time, uh, for joining us again this afternoon. I hope you liked uh, the updates that uh, we shared today. And uh, please feel free to reach out. Uh, if, you don't, if you don't come up with a question or a comment, uh, please feel free to reach out to us later. Uh, we'd be very happy to take in your queries. And uh, with that, uh, again, thank you very much. And see you all again soon. Take care, stay safe.